you know, I get questions all the time about gamifications and it's typically from small business owners and they're wanting to implement some sort of gaming features on their site. In a moment, I'm going to explain, um, you know, examples of, of how you might use that. But I always like to start any discussion on gamification by pointing out that it has to be done at the right time and not before that. Um, gamification is mainly intended to reduce churn on your site. Uh, if you've got problems with people completing your course, um, they start with lesson one, two, three of 12, and then they drop out. So gamification is aimed at fixing that, addressing that. Um, it's a way to keep people more engaged, uh, more interacted with in the course, and to keep them motivated to move along at the right pace. If you start doing that too early, the problem you'll run into is that you're focused on the wrong thing. When you start building your online course and online course site, you really ought to be focused on what's the problem you're trying to solve. Does your offer match that problem? Does it resonate with uh, your audience? And how do you get your course selling and selling at the right price? So the initial effort ought to be, how do I get more people in the course? Gamification is aimed at addressing the issues that come up once you have people on your site. And if you don't have enough people in your site, it's really hard to figure out what gamification features ought to be your priority. Uh, is it that people are moving too slowly through your program? Is it that people are dropping out? Um, is it that people take course one of three and they never get to two or they never get to three? And different gamification features are the ones that make the most sense uh, to address different problems. Now, I always like to start any conversation about gamification by describing what's easy and what's difficult. The technical implementation of any gamification uh, feature or you know, set of features is pretty straightforward. Uh, our team works with uh, LearnDash. Uh, we typically will have um, Memberium keep Infusionsoft behind the scenes helping to control access. You don't have to. Uh, but if you're on that platform, it's going to be running on WordPress, and GamePress is just a great option. Very easy to implement, very easy to create the kind of things that you're going to be needing. What's difficult, though, is how to create the right sort of features that are going to motivate people to do the right things. Um, and that's more of a business problem, and that's where your focus ought to be because the implementation part on the tech side is going to be pretty easy. So let's go over how gamification can work. Typically, what you've got to be thinking about is that people going through your program are going to get rewarded with points, credits, whatever it is that you're wanting to measure <clears throat> for doing certain things. And it can be very simple. It can be uh, you give people a certain number of points just for logging in. Uh, maybe you deduct points if they haven't logged in in two weeks. Um, you can give them points for finishing lessons, for watching a video, uh, for taking different actions. Um, I've seen a lot of people uh, assign points for people commenting in a forum or commenting on a, on a lesson. Uh, so this is just simple commenting. Uh, and all these things start adding up. <clears throat> so once you have some sort of a point structure and coming up with points that motivate the right behavior and also aren't ones that people can kind of figure out and then game the system to their advantage. That usually is what you want to be aiming for, but that's not straightforward. And that's where you really ought to be spending a lot of your, your thinking. Now, once you have these points then you can use them for different things. For example, <clears throat> you could come up and define users to be newbies, uh, intermediate, advanced and masters. So each of them can get like that little badge next to their name, which, you know, frankly motivates some people. Uh, you can create a leaderboard that everybody sees, and then you show who has the highest number of points. And to make it even better, you can put that little badge next to uh, their name on the leaderboard. So you can see, hey, look, a newbie is kind of climbing up in the ranks. Um, you know, a master, you know, or experience level person is falling down and it kind of makes it uh, you know, a little bit more fun. If you're working on uh, an internal course, and especially if it's like, let's say a sales team, uh, salespeople tend to be very competitive and being the guy that's at the top 
for interesting reasons, motivates a lot of people to stay ahead. And that could be something that the sales manager or the organization that's uh, you know, providing the training can tap into you know, that competitiveness and use that to get people to keep moving through the program. Now, one thing I always like to point out is <clears throat> you have to make it so that everybody in your program gets motivated by your system. Um, I've seen some people set this up where somebody who's really experienced or really good is always in the number one position. And what that means is that you have a lot of other people looking at that and saying, hey, they're untouchable. I can never get there. And so they drop out of the competition. So uh, you, you need to become aware of that. Um, one way to address that is, and even changing the points, is that maybe once a quarter, you, uh, you reset everybody to zero <clears throat> so that uh, you're only as good as what you've done lately. Um, so that's that's one way to do it. And that way, everybody starts uh, even at the start. And even someone who's new and hasn't been successful in the system has hope that they can really one up everybody. And then, you know, if it is an internal organization, you can, you know, point it out at a company meeting or in some sort of an email uh, broadcast that you send out so that there is some substance uh, to getting those points. Now, <clears throat> I like to um, just give an example. Years ago, I wanted to get a certification uh, on using paid um, advertising. So I, I needed to learn that. And Digital Marketer, it's an organization, had a program that got you a certification. They got you this little badge that you could put on your website. <clears throat> now, I, I wasn't particularly interested in the badge but I was interested in learning that because I needed it for ourselves and for some of our clients. So I'm going through the program and I noticed that as you kind of hit like either the 25% or the halfway mark, uh, you got like this little badge on you, which to me didn't mean that much. And it was like a 12 lesson program. And when I got to about lesson 10, I really had learned what I wanted to learn. Um, and there were a couple lessons left and I was ready to just kind of drop out, but I'm thinking in the back of my mind, hey, they give me an actual badge or certificate that I can put on my site. And it's not like droves of people are like going, oh, wow, this guy's got this badge. But it kept me in the program. And um, you know, it took me a couple hours more to finish. And I did learn something. But if they hadn't given me that badge or, or held it out as a carrot for me to chase after, I really wouldn't have been motivated enough to, to do it. So uh, you know, just wanted to share that with you. Uh, again, I wanted to stress the fact that focusing on gamification before it's time is not a good idea. Your focus should be on getting people into your course. Um, and um, you know, want to make sure that people aren't distracted and they're focused on the right things at the right times. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Cheers.